We always wanted three kids. We began planning our lives together on that Cessna flight. He was accepted to flight school, and so began my journey as a military spouse. No matter what, we're in this together, we always say to each other. I don't think we knew what this was. As I heard the phone ding from across the room, I finished cleaning the syrup sticky plates from the pancake breakfast I'd made for the kids that morning, dried my hands, and searched for my phone buried under the pillows on the couch. Lance is okay, he loves you, is all it said. Of course he is, I said to myself. I just talked to him an hour ago. Why would someone say something like this to me? Is this a joke? Our family of four had just traveled across the country to Sitka. 3,000 miles, three weeks on the road, we'd made our journey to Alaska. Plenty of sightseeing, a few flat tires, and even a fire, but nothing we couldn't handle together. My husband was the sole survivor. I loaded the kids in the car and don't even remember driving to the air station for some sort of explanation. I needed to get to him. We boarded the flight to Seattle and sat down on the last three open seats on the plane. When we landed and were taxiing to the terminal, the pilot came on the loudspeaker and asked that everyone remain in their seats. Family in emergency situation needs to get off the plane first. I looked over the seats in front of me to see who would stand and hurry to exit, and then realized, it's us. Back at home, changing his bandages twice a day, waking in the night to the sounds of a gentle cry, turning over to hold him, to calm him from shaking. Go back to sleep, I say. Everything's going to be okay. And later, I tell him we're going to have another child. Just as Lance was going back to fly again, we get this. He was being charged with negligent homicide on two accounts, two of the three men who had died in the crash, destruction of government property and dereliction of duty, failure to perform his duties as a co-pilot. After three long days on trial, the charges were dropped, but we still carry this. On any typical night, Lance comes home from work. We sit down for dinner and the phone rings. He goes off to the other room to have a conversation with his lawyer or a friend just wanting to know what's the latest. Why wasn't he talking to me about the latest? The only way I would know what was happening next would be from listening to his end of the conversation as he paces up and down our long hallway while I'm trying to get the kids to eat, bathe, and off to bed at a decent hour. But they wanted Daddy to read to them their bedtime story. I finish the last few dishes. He stands behind me, holds me and kisses me behind my ear while his cold plate of food reheats in the microwave. I'm sorry for being on the phone so long, he'd say. Sometimes I think, could my life have been easier if he wasn't here with us? I hate myself for thinking it, but I do. And I know he thinks it too. There's a struggle to keep a smile on my face for my kids, trying to keep my emotions from them. I'm fine, don't worry about me. I'm the lucky one. The dishes still need to be done. The kids still need to eat. But there are other things that still need to be done. Phone calls still need to be made. The tears still need to be shed. The embrace still needs to be given when we lay down to bed each night to share our fears. And that's what we do. Never for a moment have I given up on us. We're in this together. He's my best friend, the love of my life, my husband, the sole survivor of the crash. But I'm a sole survivor too.